Well, I'm here for the usual uh, consultation that I do have from time to time with Mr. President on issues, especially that bothers on national interests. Uh, the only reason why you are surprised maybe to see me is most of the time I come, my appointments are in the evenings, and that time most of you have, have gone. And today's appointment is at 3 o'clock, and as usual, as I said, uh, as, a, as a part of the family, and that is associates of Mr. President for a very long time, and being the chairman committee on Army, and also being a senator from the Northeast, uh, especially Borno, and that is the epicenter of the Boko Haram, and also some recent developments of um, tremendous successes that we have been recording, especially on the issue of the Boko Haram. So that's one of uh, the, those things that uh, we discussed with uh, Mr. President. And being matters of uh, security, it is not something that you start disclosing what are the details, but uh, as I said, this is not uh, an unusual visit, or this is not the first time. My, my stand on this has not changed. It's only that maybe people interpret it the way they want. There is a national law that should guide all this, and there is international law that guides this, because this is not the first time uh, we're having the such challenges in the world, in various countries. And normally when you get to war level, you are expected to either defeat your, uh, the, the enemy or the enemy surrenders. And once the enemy surrenders, you lose the right of summarily executing him because he is an enemy. And you also don't have the right to summarily declare him innocent and say, oh, you have seen, go and sin no more. What I'm saying up in issue, and I still maintain this position, in as much as we welcome the surrendering of the Boko Haram, it is very, very important that we follow the due process according to the law of the land and the international law. And that is to say, take them in, profile them, process them, investigate them, interrogate them, and then those that are innocent should be let, uh, you know, should be let go. And those that have blows in their hands, they should be appropriately, appropriately prosecuted. And once the person surrenders now, he has an advantage. Once you surrender and you cannot be just summarily convicted, you will be given the right to go to court and declare you are innocent or otherwise. That is what I'm asking for. And I'm also saying that as long as the war is continuing, it is now time to apply the carrot and stick approach while we are prosecuting the war rigorously in order to bring it to an end, a window is there available to tell those that are willing to surrender that you can surrender and then you'll be processed accordingly. And uh, after that uh, defeat, or after the war has come to an end and the window is there for them to surrender as they are surrendering in droves now, they should be processed they should be investigated. And then uh, we have sat down in Borno State last week as uh, stakeholders to look at what are the suggestions or what are the ways that these people can, after surrendering, be managed according to the law. And uh, my governor is already here uh, with the resolutions and the communique we issued to discuss with Mr. President. And very soon, I think the federal government will come out with a clear way, or maybe you know, uh, things that uh, the better way that this would be managed. So I still say that my position has not changed. I'm saying yes, people should be given the window or the corridor to come in, surrender, and then they will be processed. That is why I say, you know, when they are processed. If somebody surrenders, most of them are very bold to own up. So most of them will disclose those where are their sources, who are their sponsors, if any, and then where are they getting the, 
the equipments that, or the arms and ammunition they have been using. And also they will be useful in providing you know, uh, information to our security agencies in order to finish the business at hand, and that is winning the war. Uh, I think we are getting there because they themselves, the number, the, 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 the number of them coming up to, 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 to surrender is always increasing. I know in even Cameroon, over 1,000 of them surrendered, and most of them are Nigerians, and the Borno State government is making arrangements. And as I said, the governor is on top of the situation. The people are carried along. Even the victims are being carried along. For example, I'm a victim, and my people are victims. It, it varies, you know, on the degree of the, the, the effect of the insurgency on us. But we as Nigerians, we as humans, we, 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 we have sympathy or we have the heart to easily forgive. It's not the forgiving that is the problem. It is the issue of if you forgive somebody that has done something, you know, horrendous like that, and you are not sure that he's not coming back, or is he repenting and all that. And besides, as I said, if somebody has blood in his hand and it's not your blood, do you have the right to say, go, you are forgiven? All this, there must be procedure. And they say, unfortunately, there is an international law and the national law that should guide this. And that's why at the summit, I say that we as national uh, uh, assembly members are lawmakers. And whatever is required by law in order to address this thing that is strange in our hand, then we'll, we'll support the government to do that.